Whew, man, I'm so tired. I barely slept last night. Dude, didn't you sleep like 10 hours last night? No, I tried to sleep for 10 hours, but I really only got like three or four hours. Hey guys, let's talk about our sleep. How did you sleep last night? Do you feel like you got a full eight hours? Were you even planning on getting eight hours of sleep? There is a lot of us that struggle falling asleep. And it's really easy to just name like a sleep disorder or something like that. Like say we have insomnia or we just have severe anxiety and that's why every night we're not able to sleep. And while that may be true for a lot of the cases, what else could be causing this issue of not being able to sleep? Well, a lot of the times when we can't sleep, it has to do with our circadian rhythm. Now, our circadian rhythm is basically our body's internal clock. So this internal clock in our body will help determine when it's time to go to sleep and when it's time to wake up. And this internal clock uses our daylight or the nighttime to help determine that. And this circadian rhythm does this by releasing certain hormones. So our body's clock, our body's master clock, is located in our brain. And it's called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the SCN for short. And this controls the production of one particular hormone, our melatonin. Now some of you guys have probably heard of this hormone. Some people take melatonin pills to help them fall asleep. Melatonin is basically this hormone that's released naturally in our body throughout the day, and it peaks during nighttime. And this is the hormone that tells our body to go to sleep. Now everyone's circadian rhythm is a little different. Some people will go to sleep later, some people will wake up earlier, everyone's a little different. So what can throw this off in one person's body? Well, let's get into that. So there's a lot of things that can throw off our circadian rhythm. So one thing is napping. Well, napping in general isn't so bad. And a lot of people nap in a successful way where it actually helps them. But if you nap incorrectly, this can really throw off your sleep cycle. So when does napping become a problem? So according to the research out there, if you nap for too long, or if you nap too late into the afternoon, this can really throw off your sleep. Not only is it gonna take you longer to fall asleep, you're also gonna have a lower quality of sleep, and you're more likely to wake up in the middle of the night. So sleep experts actually recommend napping only about 20 to 30 minutes, and keeping this at the same time every single day. That way your body will kind of anticipate it. It's all about keeping things consistent for your body. That's how you keep your circadian rhythm and your sleep cycle consistent. Now something else that can really throw off your sleep is disorders like anxiety or depression. Now this doesn't mean you have to have very severe depression or very severe anxiety. You can be a regular normal person but still have anxiety that keeps you up in the middle of the night. So one interesting thing is sleep disturbances are a common symptom in a lot of different anxiety disorders. So what happens when you're a lot more anxious? Well, if you have a lot of anxiety, you're gonna have a lot more of these arousals and you're also gonna be a lot more alert. So it's really gonna delay your ability to fall asleep. So what about depression? Well, according to a review from 2019, up to 90% of people with depression complain about their ability to sleep. So all of those reports included insomnia, narcolepsy, sleep disordered breathing, and even restless leg syndrome. So restless leg syndrome is basically when, whenever you're relaxing or you're trying to sleep, you have this urge to move your legs. And that can really throw off your ability to fall asleep. Now what about things that we're putting inside of our body? Like for example, our diet or what we're drinking. Well, one big thing is caffeine. A lot of people, they cannot start their day without getting some caffeine into them. Now, I personally don't think you need caffeine if you're sleeping good or if you get enough sleep. Me personally, I never drink caffeine. I never drink any sort of coffee or anything like that. And I think a big reason I'm able to do that is because I focus so much on my sleep. The few times I've actually felt like I needed coffee is the times that I did not get a good sleep last night. So caffeine has a half-life of five hours. That means that after five hours, half of that drug in your body is gonna be gone. But that also means that half of that drug is still there. Now this is one of the major reasons that if you drink too much coffee, or if you drink it too late, it can really throw off your sleep cycle. And actually studies say that it's best to cut off your coffee at least six hours before bed. And they say that if you drink 400 milligrams of coffee six hours or less before bed, then this is where you start to see a lot of those sleep issues. So there's no doubt that caffeine or drinking coffee has a lot of benefits, right? And there's no doubt that it helps a lot of people, but there's also no doubt that it affects the quality of your sleep. And what they found is people who drink a lot of coffee compared to someone who drinks just a moderate amount of coffee, the people who drink a moderate amount of coffee 
are way less likely to be drowsy in the morning. Now, what about your diet? Well, your nutrition has a huge influence on the way you sleep. Now, this association between our nutrition and how we sleep, it's very complex. And there's still a lot of ongoing research on how exactly certain diets will affect our sleep. Now, we already talked a little bit about caffeine, but what about drinking alcohol? Well, we all know that drinking alcohol is bad for you, right? But there's some people that think that drinking alcohol helps them fall asleep faster. And the funny thing is that it's true. If you drink alcohol, the fact that it's a sedative and it relaxes you, it helps you fall asleep faster. But it's not just about how fast you're able to fall asleep, right? It's also about your sleep quality. And the bad thing about alcohol is that it affects your sleep rhythm. And it also affects the amount of deep sleep and specifically REM sleep that you're getting. Now, if you don't know what REM sleep is, REM sleep is basically in the later stages of your sleep cycle. This is where your dreaming occurs. And also this is very important for our memory and for our ability to form new memories. So if we're missing out on this part of our sleep or really any part of our sleep cycle, then it's gonna affect our brain a lot. So obviously we need to get rid of the bad stuff to have good sleep, right? But we also need to have enough nutrients in our body in order to sleep correctly. So what are things that can really improve the way that you're sleeping? Well, really the best way to get enough nutrients in your diet is to have a diet that's rich in things like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. So these are three things that can really improve our sleep. And one study was actually looking at swapping out certain things in people's diets. So they took people and they swapped out 5% of their daily protein intake and they swapped it out with either saturated fat or carbohydrates. And you may think like, well, 5% isn't really a big deal. It shouldn't really change that much. But they found that even that 5% change and swapping out protein with either saturated fat or carbohydrates, you were a lot more likely to have daytime sleepiness. And this same study even looked more at saturated fat. And they did something similar, but instead of swapping out protein with saturated fat or carbohydrates, they actually swapped out saturated fat with unsaturated fats. Now this had the opposite effect. After they did this, you were much less likely to have sleepiness in the daytime. So if you needed a reason to stop eating as much saturated fats, this is a good one. Okay guys, let's talk about that screen you're looking at. So whether you're watching me on your tablet or your phone or your laptop, those screens are gonna emit this blue light that's gonna affect your melatonin. So the blue light from all these devices will actually suppress your melatonin levels and prevent you from falling asleep. So if you're one of those guys that watches my TikToks at two in the morning, you need to stop that. Start watching it a little bit earlier. It's actually recommended to stop this screen time at least two hours before you go to bed. Now, I know that can be really hard to do. Like, what am I supposed to do for two hours before I go to bed if I'm not looking at some sort of screen? Well, this is a perfect time to start catching up on your reading or start catching up with your wife or something else that does not involve the screen. And one little tip that's really helped me as well is to start putting your phone on do not disturb mode before you go to sleep. This may seem obvious, but for a long time I didn't do it and I would get these random spam phone calls or these random text messages in the middle of the night and I would wake up for a brief moment in time and then I would go back to sleep. And for a long time I wouldn't think anything of it. But then I started learning more about sleep and your sleep cycles and how your sleep cycles can be affected. And just that random stupid phone call or that random text message will wake me up and affect my sleep cycles. So I don't want that to happen, so I started putting my phone on do not disturb. So I would definitely recommend you start doing that too. Now another big reason that can throw off our sleep cycle is if we don't exercise enough. Our bodies were designed to move. We're not supposed to be sedentary our whole life. So if you're not at least getting some sort of movement or doing some sort of physical exercise throughout the day, then our body's not gonna be physically tired enough to fall asleep. Now, all of these things are very important to correct to improve any sort of sleep situation, but there's still a chance that you have some sort of sleep disorder. And that's why I think it's very important that you should talk to your doctor about your sleep. And if you have any doubts about your sleep in general, you should get a sleep study. This is one thing that I think has become a huge problem. And sleep apnea is actually this hidden epidemic in our country, and the numbers are on the rise. And even though numbers of sleep apnea are rising, there's still a lot of people out there that are undiagnosed or have not gotten a sleep study. So it's very important to take care of your sleep. So guys, please, if you have any doubt about your sleep, go get a sleep study or go talk to your physician about it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you haven't already, 
hit that thumbs up button, and subscribe to my channel below. I will see you in the next video.